Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Oxford Reviews and How To, and on today's video, it's going to be an episode of Let's Fix Computers, or, well, computer in this particular case. This particular PC is one that we built uh, actually a little while back, and you can probably see the video of it. It was done, I think, in a live stream ages ago. I'll try and link the video either up here or down there somewhere so you can check out what it's all about. Uh, the customer has actually had this for probably a year or so now, I guess. And they've recently done some other things, upgraded, etc. They've changed slightly from the specs. So we've got a new graphics card in here. Now we've got an RTX uh, 3060 in here, whereas previously it had a RX 580, I believe it was. So quite a nice upgrade. Uh, they filled up pretty much most of the stuff on there. So uh, being someone who's into games, they've obviously filled it full of games, etc. They've been using it and it's been absolutely fine. They wanted to get into VR, so upgraded the graphics card, etc, etc. Uh, also, their internet is a little bit on the uh, squiffy side, so they've added a Wi-Fi card, which I don't think was in there originally. I think it just had a USB uh, dongle, so that's upgraded as well. But recently, there's been some issues with the PC where it's been uh, blue screening or just getting really laggy and slow. So today's basically going to be a diagnostic. So we're going to go through, see what the deal is. Now I have actually, you probably notice it's a little bit cleaner than what it is from some of the B-roll you're possibly seeing. I've actually had this thing out in the garden and also got some alcohol wipes and stuff like that on there. I've cleaned it all up a bit, just get rid of the dust bunnies. Just general maintenance, so uh, you're probably seeing that from some montage that I filmed a little bit earlier. It's much cleaner now, so we're dust free. It wasn't particularly dusty, but you know, it's like these things do suck up things like a dust buster. So it's nice and clean now, ready to work on. So what we're going to do is uh, try and work out what's been going on. Like I said, there's been some blue screens lagging. Uh, potentially, I'm thinking it's going to be a space issue because the drive's possibly getting a bit full up. The original SSD was quite a smallish one, I believe. So it's either a, a 120 or maybe even a 240. So potentially that is filling up. There is a separate mechanical hard drive in there, which is a one terabyte drive. Again, mechanical drives don't last forever. So potentially if that's either getting full or it's started developing bad sectors or whatever, potentially it might have even been kicked. You know what it's like? The old rage kick to the PC doesn't help, especially when you've got a spinning disc. I'm not saying that's what's happened. It's just these things, it can happen. A little bump when it's disc is spinning, you can start getting bad sectors, all that kind of stuff. Realistically, I've got no idea what's going on. We have had a telephone call, a um, bit of telephone support, just to go through all the kind of usual things. Are the drives plugged in? Unplug them, plug them back in. Are the drives visible in the BIOS? That kind of thing. In which case, they certainly seem to be, so the drives were visible, so that's excellent. But what we'll do is now, we're gonna fire the PC up. We'll head straight into the BIOS for sort of a quick look in there, see if there's anything obvious. Uh, potentially, it could be down to some crazy like CSM or UEFI not enabled or secure boot TPM if they've tried to update Windows etc etc. Uh, luckily as well most of the PCs that I build I also add in an additional kind of user account for myself so I can go in don't have to touch any of their data but I can go in and see things like event logs and disk usage all that kind of stuff. Anyway that's enough rabbiting on let's take a look at this and see what the hell is going on. Okay so this is the boss with PCs now fired up so boss version uh, 3.90 which I think is fine. It's a Ryzen 7 1700 eight core processor so that's gonna be fine that would have been supported straight out of the box and what else have we got here so our ram is currently xmp ddr3000 so that's absolutely fine again so both ram sticks are showing up we like that uh, let's have a look in oc tweaker we got anything going on here which we shouldn't have so no that all looks to be normal uh what we want to look at is hardware monitor so cpu temperature 52 degrees a little bit on the toasty side it is quite warm today though so it's about 26 27 degrees actually in the room at the moment so that's absolutely fine. Motherboard temperature 32 degrees. So yeah, in the BIOS, these processors do get a little bit on the warm side. Storage configuration, so SATA mode, AHCI, hot plugs disabled, that's fine. And the storage device list, so that's right. So currently it's only showing the TC Sunbow drive, but there is actually two drives actually in the machine. So is the drive spinning? The drive is spinning. The other secondary drive, which is the one terabyte, which is the games drive. So we might need to turn this off and turn it back on again, see what is going on there. Yeah, we are definitely in AHCI mode. Uh, some of the trusted computing is disabled, so that's fine. Uh, full active. Mm, wonder if we want, wonder if it needs to be in CSM mode. I don't think it does, because I'm sure I installed it as uh, GPT. I originally did it. No security. Yeah, it's only showing up that TC Sunbow drive. So I'm actually going to turn this off now and I'm going to unplug the hard drive and plug it back in again just to make sure that I didn't actually dislodge it 
whilst I was uh, doing the cleanup. It certainly seems to be spinning. I can put my hand on it, I can feel some vibration through the drive. So the motor is running, but it's just not being detected by the system. So let's uh, turn this off and we'll try it again. Right, okay, so we've done a quick reboot and gone back in. I've just unplugged the drive, plugged it back in. Whether or not it's a loose connection again, i honestly not sure. We are going to replace the SATA cable anyway, as a matter of fact, just to be on the safe side. You never can tell with SATA plugs. Uh, but we're seeing both drives now. So we've got the primary SATA drive, as you can see there, the one terabyte. That is a Seagate Barracuda, one gigabyte, uh, one terabyte, sorry. Just trying to see if I can see the manufacturer date on there. I'm not too sure when it was made. It has got one on there, maybe I'll look at that later. But both drives are showing. So that is definitely a step in the right direction. So let's go ahead now and we'll exit out of here. Leave the settings as they are. We won't turn it off, just in case it decides to lose the drive again. It does seem to be taking a little while to boot. Oh, and here we go, preparing automatic repair. So there's clearly something it doesn't like. I wonder if it's trying to boot from the Seagate drive now rather than the SSD. Some boards, if uh, a drive gets disconnected and reconnected, it will try and change the BBS settings to whatever drive is listed first. So I suppose actually if I swap the connections around, they would appear to the operating system in a different order. So I might do that anyway. Now that is unusual because I just touched the drive very slightly and then it kicks straight in. So I wonder if there is actually a problem with the connection. Could be internal hardware failure, but we'll see. Uh, so let's see if we can just continue into Windows 10 now. So flashing cursor, no, rebooted. Let's try it 11, F11 for the boot menu. And we'll tell it to use the SSD. All right, so that is the default anyway. So Windows Boot Manager for the TC Sunbow. So let's go ahead and use that. So I think what we'll do is, oh, yeah, we don't want to finish that. Remind me in three days. Okay, so crystal disc. Is crystal disc on here? I'm pretty sure it is. Actually, let's look first of all. Oh, setting up devices, so it's detecting our new USB devices. So let's quickly go into Event Viewer and see what has been going on, see if there's any errors. So we go into Windows Logs and we'll go into System first of all. See if there's any major system errors. We can check those first. Application Logs would be uh, the next one I would look at. So what we're looking for is the uh, a red cross. There we go. Oh, kernel power, lovely. Yeah, we're quite generic. Uh, event log, what we got there? Previous shutdown was unexpected. So there's another one. Kernel boot, Windows failed fast startup with error status. Right, we, yeah, fast startup, we do need to turn that off actually. We can go ahead and turn that off at some point. And what else we got? Another kernel power. Shutdown was unexpected. Windows failed fast startup. Okay. Uh, what are these? Yeah, a few. Oh, disk error. The IO operation logical block address for disk zero. And disk zero on this one is the hard disk drive. So, logical block address, IO operation, that is not a good sign. That potentially means that the hard drive is uh, unavailable to the system, basically, or the drive is available in an electrical sense, but it can't transfer data. So let's close that down. Let's go into Crystal Disk. And we'll see what this says. This is a surefire way. Uh, smart doesn't always... Oh, there we go. Yeah, straight away. So our ST1000 drive, it's a uh, caution. So, oh, God reallocated sector count 65,056. So yeah, basically it means that there is um, a bad area of the drive and the drive is desperately trying to reallocate sectors elsewhere or divert them so as not to use that. So yeah, all the other things seem to be okay. So our read error rate, spin up times, all that, that's in blue, so that means that's fine. So we've got our reallocated sector count there. So the current is 51, the worst is 51, and the threshold for failure is 36. So yeah, we are currently over and above that. So effectively, before we do anything else, really, we need to change that drive out. We'll look at the TC Sunbow, that is a 240 gig, 95% health, absolutely fine. 
a little bit on the full side, I think. Let's have a look. So we're going to my computer. Oh, gosh, yeah. So the uh, one terabyte drive is less than 10% space free, which is never really good. You can run it like that, but Windows likes a bit of space for swap file and temp files and all that kind of stuff. So that's probably not ideal. And the main drive there is, yeah, we've got about 60 gigs free, which is fine. Um, probably advisable to change that out at some point, or at least have a look at some of the files and delete some stuff, or definitely delete some games. Um, probably my suggestion would be either remove a load of stuff. Obviously, we're going to have to change this drive out anyway because it's starting to fail. So my suggestion would be probably maybe double up the size of that drive to a two terabyte or maybe even a four if funds allow. Uh, maybe even change it with an SSD just to make it a little bit faster and get rid of some of the mechanical noise of the older drive, Windows C. To be honest, that's probably okay. A little bit of file management and that could bring that down a little bit better. Although anything over 50% is going to start increasing the wear limit on the, the remaining part of the drive. So I think I'm going to go back to them and suggest that we go with uh, probably two, well, yeah, two new drives. We'll replace the D drive, put in a two terabyte or four terabyte and maybe swap out that for something a little bit bigger, like a 500 or maybe even a terabyte if funds uh, allow it. So I think that's going to be it. Let's make a phone call and uh, see what they want to do. Okay, so we're back and uh, I've had the telephone conversation and everything's been agreed. So we actually worked out to be uh, a pretty decent upgrade, to be fair. So taking out the uh, the drive, this is the Seagate one terabyte drive. So we will be replacing that. We are going to go and double that one up with a Crucial BX500. Now the BX500 range is really good, very cost effective lacks some of the cash that you get with the MX500 range, but it's considerably cheaper. So we picked up this one. This is a two terabyte SSD. And this, I think we picked up for somewhere in the region, like 120, 125, something along those lines. So yeah, fantastic value for money there. And we also are gonna be replacing the primary drive as well, the TC Sunbag, because it's getting a little bit full up and rather than go through doing all the maintenance, etc. Uh, for this particular instance, it's easier just to swap out the drive. And then at least we've got two brand spanking new drives. So if there's any further issues down the road, then we can obviously kind of rule these out a little bit. So this is a 480 gigabyte. This one, I think was some of the reason, again, about 35 pounds, I think it was. So fantastic value for money. I always recommend these actually, they're very good. If the TC Sun bags aren't available or some of the silicon power ones, those are always very good options if you can get a hold of one of those, although they do tend to be kind of limited availability here in the UK. But Crucial Drives generally always on offer and pretty decent value. So yeah, gonna give these a go, see how it goes. Both of these can be mounted on the top plate as well. So we've got a nice bit of cold air going underneath them. So keeping them a little bit cooler and hopefully making them last a little bit longer. Uh, we have also had to crack out the Oroco disc cloning station, so we will be using this. Uh, primary reason for that is I could have used Macrium. We've done videos on Macrium, how to clone discs before. You can check that out up here or down there. Uh, Macrium's very handy for doing that. But because we've got some instabilities in the system, I don't want to risk it crashing during a clone and wasting my time. So I'm going to go with the Oroco disc cloning station. We're going to pop in the one terabyte drive, put in the two terabyte drive, get it to clone across, then we can go into Windows after and we can expand the drive to use the rest of that capacity. Uh, potentially after that's done, we could possibly clone the other drive using Macrium, but to be honest with you, due to the fact that these are quite handy, I can just leave it, let it do its own thing. I can go off and answer some of your YouTube questions, which no doubt you're going to be leaving on this video. So I'm going to go on and do that, let this do its thing. It's going to take a couple of hours, I'm guessing. I'm not entirely sure because it's SSD to SSD. It should be pretty nippy, but we'll uh, see how it goes. Anyway, I'm rabbit on way too long, so I'm going to get this fired up and uh, we'll get the drive cloning done. So I figured actually I might as well just show you how this works as well. So if you've not seen one, one of these disc cloning stations work, they all kind of work in a very similar way. So all you do is plug in some DC power, which is via an adapter there. Don't need any other cables, it will do it as a standalone clone mode. There is a little switch on the back here, so we just put that into clone mode rather than PC mode. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. And on the top, you'll see there is a section which says source and target. So our source drive is clearly going to be our old drive. So we're going to put that in into the unit and make sure that locks into place. There we go, that's in firmly. And then we can get our destination drive or our target drive and we can slot that in the front there. Make sure it fits in. Didn't want to go in. 
this clone system actually came out a little while ago so the actual SSDs are actually a little bit narrower now so it doesn't fit in quite as well as it did so I think they've gone down to like 6mm rather than the 9mm that they were previously anyway I digress so we're going to turn on the power on the back and we should get the drive spin up and some blue LEDs which we can see hopefully you can see on the front here there's a section thank you for that on the front here there's a section which tells you how much of the actual task has been done so 25 50 percent 75 percent 100 percent normally it'll bleep a couple of times when it's done so literally all you have to do is on the back find the clone button or start button and just press it and hold it and there we go that is it simplicity itself so you don't have to install any software literally just press the button let it get on and do its own thing so you can possibly just about make out hopefully the, uh, the lights at the top there are scanning across, so they scan to and fro as it goes through 25%, 50%, 75%, etc, etc. Then you can get an idea of how long it's going to take. It does take ages, so I'm actually going to leave this now. So we'll stop recording and we'll come back when the task is complete. And then uh, we'll put it back in the machine, see if it boots up much quicker, which hopefully it will do. If it does, then we'll transfer the other drive over after before we go looking for any other potential problems. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so that didn't go as intended. So at the moment, I've got the Oracle connected via USB to my laptop and I had to actually reallocate a drive letter to the Seagate drive. So for some reason, it lost the drive letter. Uh, no idea how that happened. So I've reallocated that using a combination of F disks. So I cleared the old drive, the SSD, and with that went into device management, assigned it a drive letter, and it seems to be in Windows now, as you can probably see on the laptop there. Um, I don't really want to touch anything or do anything because I just want it to copy the data. So currently it's in the process of discovering. I've done select all for the actual D drive. I was going to copy it straight over to the other drive in Windows, which I've now called the other drive G. And uh, hopefully once it's finished discovering, it will copy it all across and then I can say goodbye to the Seagate drive once and for all because it's driving me insane. So anyway, I'm going to uh, let this carry on discovering. I'm going to go out and actually have a drink, I think, because uh, <laughs> if I had hair, I'd be pulling it out by now. Anyway, that's enough about me. I'm going to let this carry on and I'll report back shortly. Okay, so it is day two of the data recovery, which is uh, not going particularly well for this particular system. So as you can probably see from this shot and also some B-roll I filmed a little bit earlier, so we have got some new drives down in the bottom basement there. So we've got a Crucial 480 gig and we've also got a Crucial 2 gig. So one for Windows, one for games. I've already done the disk clone for the main Windows drive and that appears to have gone absolutely fine. So uh, looking good there. And I'll turn the PC back on. We've got the drives installed. So let's see what is going on here. So we're gonna go into the BAS, look into storage configuration, and we're showing both drives, which is uh, excellent. That's what we wanted to see. So let's head over into boot. And what I wanna do here is to make sure that it doesn't try and boot from the secondary drive. So boot option one is the Windows Boot Manager on the 480, which is what we want. Boot option two is the same drive, but the AHCI version rather than the boot manager. So that's okay, we can leave that. Uh, but we don't want it to be trying to access the secondary drive at all. So we go into the BBS settings. So the first drive is our AHCI, the Crucial 480, so that's fine. And boot option two is the two terabyte, which we don't want. So we'll go ahead and disable that. Uh, we've already checked to make sure that the RAM speeds and all that kind of stuff are good. So that's looking good. So we can save our changes and exit. And in theory, this should now boot into our Windows installation. And there we go. So that is the uh, new user account, which I've created so I can use it without actually accessing customer's information or logins, all that kind of stuff. And there we go. There is our Windows installation. Now, because the previous drive was a four, no, the previous drive was a 240 gig. This is now a 480. The cloning process normally takes the system as being the same drive. So uh, actually, first thing I want to do, I want to go into Crystal Disk. Let's make sure that everything is working as it should be. So yeah, 100%, we like that. And for the secondary one, 100%. Excellent. That is exactly what we want to see. So 
That's good. Now what we need to do is go into uh, disk management and we need to expand the partition. So as you can see here, so we've got all this unallocated space is expand our space. But because it's put that recovery partition there, that is going to cause problems. So we need to move the partition. So let's go ahead and move that partition. Okay, so we're back and there's been uh, some very, very weird things going on with this particular system. Uh, this is the next day actually. I spent another day pretty much wrestling with this particular thing. I'm not entirely sure where I've got to in the video, so this editing may go a little bit weird and you may have heard things already, but essentially just to recap, so PC came into us first of all, um, blue screen in, not loading windows, etc. Yeah, it looked out as if this drive had bad sectors and it was reallocating them on a very rapid basis, so it was losing data as fast as I could try and recover it. So effects V, this has turned out to be dead. Then, as you saw in the video, then we cloned the drive, the old TC Sunby, the main boot disk, onto the new BX drive and put it back in and it was buggy as all hell. Loads of things weren't working, Windows Store would not work. Even tried to do a fresh install over the top, like a repair install, which we've done videos on, which you can check out up here or down in the description. Bizarrely, that didn't work. It's the first time I've ever known a repair installation to not fix Windows problems. The Windows Store was completely corrupted, as were many other things. Uh, couldn't even open things like Paint. Literally, I could do a screenshot, pressing the Windows key, Shift and S, grab a section, put it into Paint. Then if I clicked on the actual file after, once I've saved it, it says paint is not available. So it was very, very weird, very, very buggy, very unstable. So a quick telephone call to the owner and said, look, realistically, I've put kind of almost two days into this, we need to start afresh. So that is what we did, reinstalled Windows, and as you can see at the moment, it's uh, running fine. We did do a live stream on Saturday in between the start of this video filming and today, which is Sunday, and you can see in greater depth that we went through, installed all the files, etc., done some testing, uh, got a set of Corsa or Corsetta running, and that was averaging 200 frames per second. So this thing is flying now, it's doing really, really well. All up and running, that is great. So it leaves me with the kind of what actually caused it. So the actual physical hard drive, the Seagate drive, that appears to have just developed bad sectors and was reallocating. So we could probably put that down to being possibly a bad drive. Maybe it's had some physical damage. I don't know, I don't think so. I think it's just one of those things the drives do generally tend to fail. But for the Windows drive to become as corrupted as it did, really did cause me some concern. And actually, when I was doing the fresh installation of Windows 10, it did seem to be a little bit slower than I'd expected. So I went into the BIOS and actually reconfigured the PC Express. As you can see, the graphics card in here is a RTX 3060, which is a PCI Express Gen 4 drive. The motherboard is a ASRock B450 Pro 4, which is PCI Express Gen 3. Now, I know a lot of people have had issues with PCI Express Gen 4 running on Gen 3 if you're using things like riser cables, etc., because of the signal degradation as it goes through and it's expecting a PCI Express Gen 4 signal, but it's getting a PCI Express Gen 3. So, yeah, you do sometimes get problems. So I've actually changed the PCI Express generation in the BIOS for the actual graphics card slot. It does seem to be quicker. Now whether or not it's something to do with the PCI Express signaling is then corrupting data, I honestly don't know. It seems like a lot of the problems actually started when the graphics card was installed, at least from my investigations and what I've heard from the owner. So to summarize this particular job, I would say if you're upgrading a graphics card, putting a PCI Express Gen 4 card into a slightly older system or a system that only supports PCI Express Generation 3, definitely go into your BIOS and physically change your PCI Express graphics slot so that rather than being set to auto speed, set it to PCI Express Gen 3. I personally believe that could be the problem. Please do let me know in the comments section below if you're an expert on that sort of thing. Would that make sense? Would data corruption happen? on the SATA system, even if the graphics card is set to the wrong PCI Express generation. I know the SATA ports kind of do run off the PCI Express lanes in effect because they run through either the chipset or whatever and the chipset is connecting through PCI Express to the processor. I'll be honest with you, I'm not too sure. But as it stands at the moment, the system is running, it's running well. Uh, we've got a little bit of a cleanup as well as you've seen from some of the footage. But this has been 
the fix from hell. It really has been. I was completely in my mind it was going to be right. Just swap out the drives, clone them over, job done, hand the system back, it's going to be up and running. But literally, we've done a fresh install, we've had to start everything again, go through all the passwords, reset things, put Steam on again, do the account creation, put Origin on, download the games, etc., and test them to make sure they're all running. It has been an absolute nightmare, and effectively, it's been kind of best part of three days worth of labor. So, yes, it has been a slightly traumatic experience. So, let me know in the comment section if you had a similarly traumatic experience doing an upgrade or a repair job on a PC. I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below. But I think that's going to wrap this one up. It's turned out okay in the end. It's taken on considerably a lot longer than I'd expected, but hey, that's PCs for you. So that's going to wrap this up. Please comment in the comments section below. Let me know your experiences. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.